They said electric cars would never catch on. They said electric cars weren't cool. They said electric cars couldn't outpace a Porsche or a Ferrari. They hadn't seen one of these. Electric cars and trams aren't new. They were very popular a hundred years ago. Until petrol took over. But apart from the occasional concept car, it wasn't until 1996 that a major manufacturer started producing them here, when General Motors unveiled the EV1. Other manufacturers had to come up with their own non-polluting electric vehicles under a Californian law to help reduce smog. Well, the EV1 indeed was the leap of faith. Uh, you're doing something very new, new um, something that uh, in many ways is scary. There were some in General Motors that were very enthused and others that were very dubious. But when the law was challenged and then watered down, GM and its car giant chums demanded the leased vehicles be returned. This is what happened to almost all of them. A potential revolution crushed. The car companies blamed the technology and lack of interest. Critics say they wanted to kill it off, to protect profits from petrol. Wind forward to today. Oil prices have tripled. We're worried about climate change. And hybrid cars, part electric, part petrol, are starting to make an impact. But it still has emissions. It's still dependent on oil. So whatever happened to the all-electric car? Nope. <laughs> no. There she is. This small Silicon Valley startup is finally putting the fizz into electrics. The Roadster has a good pedigree. Its ultra-light carbon fibre body is designed by Lotus, based on the Elise. And thanks to new battery technology, it can go three times as far as the car Wally built. The technology has evolved a great deal. When we first did the um, EV1, all we had really to work with was lead-acid batteries. And now we have lithium batteries, and the lithium batteries are evolving and getting better with time. The car's powered by ordinary lithium-ion batteries, exactly the same kind that you'd find in laptops or smartphones, except it needs 7,000 of these, all put into a large battery case, which makes up a third of the car's total weight. The Roadster is beautifully simple. It has 12 moving parts. This is the only one in the small electro-induction engine. It needs no oil change, filters, spark plugs or clutch. Plug it in overnight and you're ready to go again. For some reason, marketing chief David wouldn't let me drive and as we rolled silently out of the garage, I was about to find out why. You see, electric engines don't wind up the power like combustion engines do. You get 100% of the torque from the second you touch the pedal. For the Roadster, that means 0 to 60 miles per hour in four mind-blowing seconds. Inside, the car's been stripped down to bare essentials. Two gears take you from 0 to 65 and then on to 130 miles an hour. There's good and bad news for your wallet. On the good side, the electricity costs about two cents per mile. That's around a tenth of the cost of gas in the US and one twentieth in Europe. But the super savings from this supercar come with a super price tag. $98,000. But hang on, aren't there some problems with electric cars? Always check your power gauge. 
If you run dry, just plug it in. The optional mobile charger kit fits a standard plug socket. You did buy the optional mobile charger kit, didn't you? Hmm, good point. David. It's still much easier to clean up the emissions at the energy plant than it is out of the tailpipe of a car. So that's one explanation as to why our car is cleaner. The other reason is because the car is better at using the energy that you feed it. Uh, more than 80% of the energy that you put into the car actually powers it down the road. Now you compare that to an efficiency in the 20% range for most combustion engine cars, and you can see that our car is significantly cleaner. The first hundred of these electric supercars roll silently off the production line in October. There's already a year-long waiting list. Tesla has plans for a cheaper four-door family saloon in 2009. That is an exhilarating ride and certainly one you do not expect from an electric car. But then this motor does hit 13,500 revs per minute. It's also futuristically quiet. David had disappeared in the haze of the midday sun and things were about to get even hotter. This is not a mirage. It's a madman's dream. The X1 is more of a concept car that Silicon Valley entrepreneur Ian Wright is using to raise eyebrows and money to build a proper sports car. Because this is just a rocket. <laughs> the X1 goes from 0 to 60 miles per hour in the time it takes to say 0 to 60 miles per hour. It pulls 1G in a straight line, and apparently, quite a bit more. I've had very beautiful women walk up to me in the street and want to know all about my car. That's never happened to me in my life before. The traditional image of electric cars is that they're heavy, ugly, and slow, and you wouldn't want to be seen dead in one. Um, you certainly wouldn't want to get one out on the freeway. And it's, it's all doesn't have to be true. You can make very interesting electric cars, beautiful ones, very, very fast ones. Like Tesla, Ian sees the pure electric car market for now as a top-end concern because battery power now delivers top-end performance and because the rich may also want to save the planet. And what a way to do it.